so I just posted this uh, picture on Facebook. I'm tired, man. Looking. Anyway, uh, I just posted this picture on Facebook, and uh, one of my friends wrote to me behind the scenes. Uh, and actually, I think somebody else commented on it. Uh, this guy, Fred, everything, if you ever heard of him. And he was asking me why I look so old in this picture, even though it was like almost 20 years ago. And a friend of mine also wrote to me behind the scenes. She was just like, yeah, man, you look... She's like, you look either older or you look like more tense or something like that. And she was just like, I wonder if your life experiences now or the, you know, as you've gotten older, it's lightened your mood or something like this or like made you more fresh or whatever. And I think this, this is a possibility, but I also wonder if it has anything to do with where I live. I wonder if it has anything to do with leaving Philadelphia. And it's no secret, everybody knows that I love my city. I love Philadelphia. Um but I I can't I can't live there anymore. And um because Philadelphia is a tough city. And and tough in a way that I really am not interested in being anymore. Not that I was like a tough guy or anything like that, but at least putting up the image, which is a necessary thing if you want to, like, you got to at least give the appearance of the mess with me, you know? And um, so I wonder if that has something to do with where I am right now in my life and the way I carry myself or something. Because I did notice when I moved to Montreal, it, it took like a, quite an adjustment for me because, um, it, yeah, it, it took some adjusting because I wasn't used to being in a place where nothing really happened. So I think I was like, uncomfortable with just waiting for something to go down that never came and then so it took me a while to chill and then so once I started chilling out and getting used to like Montreal everything was like fine but even when I would go back to Philadelphia I don't know if I was like actually prepared to be there anymore because I don't know if my instincts are still on point or whatever. I don't know. I could be over dramatizing, dramatizing, dramatizing the whole Philly thing, but like, I don't know. It's definitely not like Montreal. Montreal is like when people fight in Montreal, I've seen a couple of street fights in, in Montreal. Now, I'm not saying this is how they all are, but this is how it was at least where the places that I hung around. So when guys get into like an argument or something like that, they just, they like grab each other like this and then they wrestle around or whatever and push each other and all that. And then, then they just break it up and then they like one guy goes this way and the other guy goes that way and then they just yell at each other and then that's the end of it. Nobody really gets hurt. I don't think punches really get thrown that much. You know what I mean? At least, at least where I was hanging out. Um, and so when you live amongst this, it allows you to relax a little bit more. So, and actually, I, I was also thinking about a time I was like talking to this, this, uh, this girl who happened to be, we had mutual friends and through him, she found out that I was from Philadelphia and she was moving to Philadelphia. And so she wanted to talk to me about like um, all the like the ins and outs of the city, like where's a good neighborhood to live and everything. And she was asking me about like, you know, how you can dress or whatever. And she was like, because I really like the dress. And I don't know if she said like sexy clothes. I don't know what she said, but like, and she was just like, because catcalling was like a, was like a big thing at this, at the moment. And um, 
at that exact moment, I think that video about cat calling was out. I don't remember, but um, and she was like, "Yeah, because if somebody says something to me, I'm gonna la la la." And yeah, and I was like, "Man, I don't, I don't think Philadelphia is the place to be doing all that." You know, you well, you could do it, but you gotta be prepared for what comes after it. You know, um. And I was saying that, like, as far as, like, safe places go, I don't know if you could really call any part of Philadelphia safe in terms of leaving Montreal and coming to Philadelphia. Um, I was saying, like, looks can be deceiving, you know, just because it looks nice doesn't mean that it is nice. And, you know, so you just got to be prepared for that. And she was just like, well, how do, how you know, how do people, like, survive in this environment this sounds like horrible or whatever and I was like well it's not horrible I, I, I was explaining to her that like you kind of have to keep you have to keep in your in your um, like in the back of your mind that just anything can happen at any time anywhere and you guys you just have to be aware of your surroundings you know know who's in in the room you know, look and see who came in the room, see who doesn't like each other, even if it doesn't have anything to do with you. You got to see how people are looking at each other and all that different kind of stuff. And um, you just got to be able to read people, too, and, like, size them up really fast and, and, and figure out if somebody is a threat or if they see you as a threat. And so you just got to be ready for all of that. And you just hold it in the back of your mind. This is what I told her. You just hold it in the back of your mind and then you go about your business and you should be all right. So I don't know what happened to her. I don't know if she took my advice. Um, who knows? Um, but I wonder if the stress of this thing that I had to keep in the back of my mind all the time played a part in how my face looked and the difference on how it looks now. Well, I mean, right now I got, because I mean, I am getting old, but, you know. Um, but I wonder if that played a part. Uh, you tell me.